So what's up, YouTube? This is Nia here, Face of Interiors. We're going to do some upholstery today. Hi YouTube, Neil here, Face Lifting Series. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to re-upholster these dining chairs. So obviously we're redoing them in a vinyl. They're all sewn together, so they're quite tricky with regards to the stitch inside of it. They're all top stitch as well, and it all goes on as one cover. You could potentially, I've seen someone else re-upholster some of these recently in a velvet. You could do it all separately. You do the seat inside back and then the outside back all separately, but you kind of have to change the style of the chairs then. So we've just copied the original. We've basically taken the old cover off, copied all the templates. We're going to show you how to do that, how to unpick it, how to copy all the templates, how to cut it, how to sew it, and then how to put the cover on. But there's lots of tips and tricks in the video, like how to cut out your excess, how to put nips in around curves. So if you like these kinds of videos, don't forget to hit subscribe. So we're uploading every week. So lots of tips and tricks every week if you're getting into upholstery. We just like watching the process. Anything we can help with as well, drop us a comment. If you like the video, don't forget to give us a like. So yeah, on to today's video, how to recover dining seat covers in vinyl. Action. Firstly, let me apologize for the hair. I clearly have just got out of bed. So what I'm starting to do now is I'm just gonna cut the bottoming fabric off get that off and then I will start stripping the original fabric off the chair. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a black marker pen to mark points where there is seams that joins on other bits of fabric and I'm just putting marks in the middle as well so I know when I sew it all back up, when I cut the new fabric, I will copy them marks onto the new fabric and I know that everything will line up when the two nips hit each other. So what I'm doing here is using my pincers to get the old staples out and lift the old fabric up. As you can see, I'm snapping with the pincers. You can see my arm movement, snapping the old fabric up and lifting some of the staples at the same time. Now I'm going to take the fabric off as one whole piece. Try not to rip it as the vinyl has got quite old. And off she comes. Now I'm using a Stanley knife to unpick the panels. Be careful, I don't want to start tearing them. It's not the end of the world if you tear the old fabric because you're going to be replacing it anyway. But try and be careful. Well guys, what I'm doing here, hey, how you doing? I'm unpicking the old fabric. I could probably do this by measurement, but I'm gonna unpick the old bits, check the sizes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep the chairs up. So the foam's fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a few more webs across the back, a few more webs in the seat, make it a bit stronger. Then I'm going to put some Dacron on, then it's ready for upholstery. So what do I do here? I've got my blade in, hold onto the fabric nice and tight. Just slide your blade through the stitches. Some fabrics this won't work on, but for this one I know it is going to work, so I can save myself a lot of time instead of going each one stitch by stitch. Here it's not going to do because it's a curve. On any straights you can do that on. So that is the two side panels. I'm just going to nip that out because it's not showing up very well because it's quite dark. So nip that out. And the centre up there is going to make that a bit more visible. So then we have seat, inside back, outside back, all in one piece. So that's the outside back. I oh know I've got my nip there, that's my mark. So I will copy that there as well. So just by folding that over, making sure it's all lined up. Inside back. And this has got a slight curve in it. So we will undo this and we're gonna copy it. As you can see here, there is where the fly started and there. A fly is a piece of fabric that can be used to extend any part of the upholstery fabric, whether it be the inside back, the inside arm, the seat. It can be in the same fabric, it could be in an old fabric. Generally, you keep old fabrics and cut them all up into flies. Flies tend to be used for two different reasons. Number one, to make a bit of fabric longer. Number two, to pull down under a rail and to be able to be stapled off. So they've already nipped it out for us, but to show you guys at home, I'll just put a little mark, just so you can see what I'm doing. Here, where it's where the fly started, so I'll mark that there. Same over here. On both sides, there is a fly. So mark that out. I'm gonna put top, inside, back. Right, I've got my pieces now. My marks as well, I'm gonna mark that out. So 
that is the seat. What I'm going to do is wait until I get my fabric tomorrow and I'm going to see how stretchy it is. Because this stuff, quite a thick vinyl, it's not very stretchy. What I might do is use this, flatten it out all the way around. As you can see, if I flatten it out all the way around, lay some stuff on it if you need to, lay some, some weights and stuff to hold it in place. Cut it out, then I'm going to see if my fabric has got any more stretch in it. If my fabric's got a bit more stretch in it, I will probably take slightly less than half inch for the seam allowance. So instead of a half an inch, I might take a quarter of an inch. It gives you enough to stretch. You don't want it to be too big, you want it to be nice and tight. Okay. Guys, so what I'm going to do with this chair now is I'm going to cut my hair cut today, man. Web the backs. The webs are a bit weak. Same on the seats. Tighten them up. Put some Dacron on, then that is ready for upholstery. It's all stripped down. Just watch. Watch what I do, man. Look at them. They're very... Basically nothing in them. I'm going to cut them out. Another thing, a skewer is good for... Holding things out of the way. This phone just wants to keep springing back. Stick a skewer into the back. It's holding it down. What we do with these, we pull them super tight. So that is the back's all webbed. So what I'm doing here, guys, releasing the springs. Well, not springs, webs. Pulling them much tighter. Like so. So what we've done here guys is put a hessian layer on top of the webs to protect the foam from collapsing through. It hasn't done yet, but as the foam gets older, there's more chance of it collapsing through. So we do that as a protective layer. You've seen that in other videos of ours. So now the seat can go back. Now we're gonna put Dacron on. So they didn't have Dacron on before. Just to give it a nice, luxurious feel. It's another way of telling the difference between high quality products and not. Dacron is very important. What I'm doing here, basically I'm pinching, I'm pulling all that that way, all that that way, so you can see, you can feel where your corner is. You just want to snip all that away. You can put a bit of glue in there, let that dry. Cut all this away first. Tuck your Dacron under your inside back. See your glue here, pinch that together. Now that's gone off. Do the same on this side as well. So now we're gonna do our inside back. What I do is I'll just push that under, just tuck it under so it holds it into place. Then I'll glue. You don't need to put excessive amounts of glue on Dacron because it will stick. It's not like foam where you need it to be stuck down quite firm. 
as long as it's held in place and it doesn't move when you put the fabric on, that should be fine. What I do is just glue that on the side, that way you can do the same here. Also, that cron really helps with getting your new fabric to slide on nice and easy. It's a lot easier without it being on bare foam. If it's on foam, it's not gonna go on very easy. It's not gonna play ball. That is now ready for fabric. Right, so onto the next stage. As you can see here, we laid out our panels from our old chair that we took apart. We've got our new vinyl as well. Thicker than I thought it was gonna be. So it's lucky that we're not doing any deep buttoning in it because it would be a little thick, you know? A little too thick. So what I've got here is seat, inside back, outside back and over here I've got both side panels. I've obviously put nips to follow and with these ones sometimes what can happen with fabric that's been on something for a long time it can distort so a good thing to do is fold it in half make a nip. So I'll show you what I'm going to do I'm going to cut this panel I've got my center mark here and my center mark here so what I'm going to do is cut half an inch away from this finish edge here. The reason I'm cutting half an inch away is to allow, if I've pulled this out, you'll see the seam allowance there. So I'm cutting half an inch away to allow for that. Instead of having to try and lay the fabric all out flat. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this out flat, follow that shape. And you see there, I've got my center nip. So I'm gonna nip that. So that is my center nip. And then I've got a center nip down here. And I've got a mark here, there it is. Because I've already marked, I've marked all the fabrics like I did earlier, I put black marks, I showed you that, so I can follow that later. So, we can get rid of that now. So now we've cut half, now, I'm gonna fold that over. There and there, you see the nip. Now, we can just copy that. Sometimes it's best to weigh these down with some, something heavy. Try and keep the shape. So the only thing I've got to do here is that nip there on the side. Copy that. So then I know, because sometimes these can get distorted. So sometimes this side can be slightly different to this side. So I'm gonna pick the best side, which I think these all look pretty straight, so they're all right. Then I'm gonna copy it over. The reason we do that is so we get a perfect template and it's the same, exactly the same, both sides. So that is our seat panel. So I'm gonna mark that top seat. So that is the back of the seat. Then we are onto inside back. So up here you've got straight because it's the top of the chair. Here you've got the curve to allow for the bottom, like the back of that. You've got a curve here and you've got a curve here to allow for the fabric to be pulled in, like I've done on the other one. See my nip there. So I'm going to copy that onto the top. And I'm going to do the same on the bottom. And we've also put a nip over this side. So I've got a little nip in here as well, because basically there's a fly that sews onto this. There's a bit of fabric that sews on that allows you to pull the fabric down. So I know that that is there when I fold it over onto the other side. I'll make a nip here as well. And I know that the fabric has to be sewn in between those two parts. So like we did on the other panel, fold it in half, get it nice and straight. Follow that. Down here, there's a bit of a shape to it. So I'm gonna follow that. and the little nip is there. So this is the outside back, so I wanna know where the center of the bottom of my outside back is. So I'm folding this bit of fabric together, making sure the two seams are in line, pinch the middle, then I know that that is the center of the, the back. I've already done the top, you can see the mark there. Like we've done on the other panels, this one looks a bit more distorted, this side. This side looks straight. Right, so this is one of the side panels, and then this piece sews onto there. I've taken it off. This bit sews onto there and goes up. So that is the side of the chair. So what we're gonna do is cut two of these and two of these. Then we're gonna start sewing everything together. We're gonna cut around here. Make sure you give yourself enough to staple off at the bottom. There is a nip there. And here you can see where the staples are. So this is the bottom. So as long as you allow enough, I'm just gonna go about half an inch bigger. That's one side. Right, I'm gonna cut this bit out here. Because it's a vinyl, there's no pile, so you can basically turn it whichever way saves you the most fabric. If there's a velvet 
and there's a pile, it has to all be done the same way, but with a vinyl, you have freedom. So I'm just gonna show you how we're gonna do this stitching, because it's also in one piece. It's good to have a plan or a technique of how you're gonna do it. So if you can look down here, we've got outside back, inside back, seat. So we're gonna sew these two bits together, and then we're gonna sew these two bits together. So it's one long bit of fabric, essentially. And then the border and the side, I'll show you that quickly. And that is what the side looks like. So then we will run the fabric in one piece, go up, around, around, boom in one movement because we've got top stitch it as well so that is how we're going to do it on to the next stage now which is sewing so we're going to sew all our panels together we're going to sew these side panels together we're going to sew the seat the inside back and the outside back all together as one piece and then we'll just run it around here in one go I'm just going to start sewing these bits up so basically now we're going to join the outside back and the inside back and then we're going to join the seat on afterwards so we've got our two nips there we know they need to line up and these basically need to be even across the top I'm gonna to top stitch this outside back because once it's all sewn on, it's gonna be a nightmare to get to. So I'm gonna to top stitch this panel now. So what I'm doing is I'm stitching down the line and I'm making sure this foot, the edge of this foot is on that line as I follow down. So what I've got here is a fly, and this fly is going to be stitched on in between these two marks. And then it's used to pull the fabric down on the inside of the chair. So it's used to basically pull. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the side panel on, just follow it all the way around. We've got all the nips to follow, so I'm going to start here. So I know that that nip has to line up with that seam. So that's fine. So what I've done is I've stitched on half of the chair, so that half's all, all on and okay. So now I've got to put this side on. And what I did is I, I couldn't get it to all line up exactly the way I wanted it, so what I did is I used a stapler to sort of hold it in place. So I'll show you what I did. I want that to fall there. So I'll put a staple in there. Not too far in as well, because you've got to allow for your half an inch sewing to go over the top. Staple it down. The most important bit is here. I want that nip to line up on the top there, so it does on the other side, so they're exactly the same. So that is the most important part. That's the best way to do it. Staple it in place, and then you haven't got to worry. Right, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to put the cover on. It's all been sewn up, so it all goes on as one piece. As you come around these corners here, for instance. Because it's top stitch, it's quite a thick fabric, it's likely to gather up. So what I've done is I've cut away some of the excess selvage and I've made little nips in it as well. Same with up here on the bend as well. Try and take some of the selvage out and then make little nips as well so it doesn't all pucker up. You can see it puckering up as you're top stitching it. So try and just take it out. So we're gonna put this on now. Obviously it has to go on from the top down and it's gonna be hot and sweaty because these are the right effort to get on. So um, wish me luck. So as we get to this stage, we get to the fly. This has to go around the back. There's a big bit of wood there, so you've got to try and tuck it under and then get hold of it and then pull it all down. So this fly has got to go down here. And if you look down here, there she is. So what we do now is we're going to get these front corners on. So what I'm doing now, I am manoeuvring the seat. So basically I want the seams all in the right place. Especially important here on the front, the corners are on the corners. Because once you start stapling it off, you can go back on yourself, it's a lot of work. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna staple off this fly on the inside. So it's nice and tall. So that's the fly stapled off. What I'm doing here is I'm pulling all the excess up from the seat and down, and I wanna make sure this seam lands on this corner of this leg. And you also wanna pull out all the excess from the seat, so I want it exactly there. So I'm just gonna temporary that off 
by temporary I mean I put a staple in at a slight angle so it's easy to pop out if I need to. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So what I've done is I've pulled this down so I've got a nice tight pull here. That is exactly where I want my seam to be. Likewise on the other side. I made a couple of cuts up into the fabric. I'll show you what I do with them later. I'm literally just making cuts so I can release myself a little bit of fabric. So what you want to make sure is everything is where it needs to be. So this seam here on the corner of the back leg. Now we're gonna do the other side. Now I have everything where I need it. I'm gonna come onto the front again. So what I'm gonna do here, start waking my way across and stapling off this fabric. Pull all the excess out. Make sure you've got no bumps and lumps on the front. Tack ties, as they're called. So now we're at this corner. So when doing corners like this, it's important that you pull the fabric tight because you don't need to pop out because they're not necessarily held by anything. So what we should do is we cut up to the wood and also I cut along here. You can feel that the, the fabric's gonna finish right there so we cut there. I'm also gonna make a cut here as well. We will cut about half an inch away and the same there. What we're gonna do here is use our regulator. So I've used the regulator to tuck the fa excess fabric under. Then I can staple that off here and that is that side done. Now we've got to get rid of all this here. So as you can see, now we've pulled tight around that side. We've got a bit more here. What we'll do here is snip in. We're a bit closer, like so. Again, now use your regulator again. To tuck your excess fabric under. Now staple that off and that is your corner finished. Now if you was doing this on a up, fully upholstered chair, because this is all in one piece, you haven't really got much flexibility with regards to pulling backwards, it all has to fit on as it's already sewn on. If you're doing a seat on its own, pull nice and tight this way, get that side stapled in, then pull nice and tight this way and have a really tight corner here. That's not gonna come out anyway, but that will do nicely. So now what I'm gonna do is work my way back, and start stapling these sides down. So I finished the stapling off, then I cut the old fabric off, and then I put a bottom in on, and that is the job finished. I won't make this video even longer by putting another bottom on. I'll link it here above. We've done a video before on how to put a bottom on. So that was how to re-upholster dining seat covers in vinyl. It was quite tricky to be fair because the vinyl, when we ordered it, I didn't realise how thick it was going to be when it came in. In the book, it's non-FR. When we ordered it, we had to order FR. So it's come out quite thick. So it was quite tough. Don't forget to check back in next week. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next week.